Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Analyze This, where we basically get to touch on everything business, finance, and the economy. My name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show is my co-host. I'm Arisa Ugu. And today we're going to be talking about insurance in Nigeria. So insurance is basically a hedge against risk. So you can get insurance on anything that is valuable to you. So from your car, your house, your laptop, your phone. But I find that in Nigeria, <laughs> we tend to have this attitude towards insurance like, it go better, God forbid, that will happen to me. But... <laughs> Unfortunately, bad things happen to good people sometimes, and we need to have the attitude of preventing it before, you know, it happens. I remember this morning, I was going to work uh, very early in the morning, like, say, maybe five-ish, because I leave very early. And um, right in front of Quillox, I saw this, um, there was this fire, right? Two oh, cars. Wow. There was this G-Wagon in front, and then uh, a saloon car rear-ended it. I don't know what happened, but whatever it was, both cars were completely burnt wow. beyond recognition. It was so bad, I didn't even know what the saloon car was. And I was thinking to myself, I wasn't even thinking about the saloon car. I'm thinking, <laughs> the G -Wagon. this G-Wagon, I hope it's insured. Because, I mean, at that point, he probably didn't have anything to do with that accident. Yeah. And the car has gone up in flames. And he's thinking to himself, um, what am I going to get 25, 30 million to, to get this car again? Especially in the situation we are right now mm -hmm. and that is what insurance kind of does for you so i'm thinking in the insurance uh, the financial world the first thing any investment person is doing or in fact Hedging against exactly risk. we're always looking at risk so um we want to put money into uh, stocks we're thinking how how possible is it for us to lose money we're uh, trying to put money into uh, real estate we're thinking how possible is it for us to lose money and that sort of helps us drive how much we put into every investment. So I'm thinking my, to myself, how come is it that Nigerians walk about every day not thinking of the about, biggest yeah. investment they have themselves? themselves? So you're thinking, um, I, I will not fall ill because Jesus will not allow it. <laughs> um, I will not die. It's not my time. I will live to declare the glory of the Lord. Um, but bad things happen, happen guys. To good like you, you are your greatest asset. You need to protect yourself against risk because the cost is probably going to be higher in the Boom. long run if you don't have insurance. But let's go to the streets and see what the people are saying about insurance. <laughs> Um, insurance, I know it's a means of protection from financial loss. Uh, when I get a car, I'd love to insure my car. Insurance is basically planning for your known uncertainty that comes with life. That's, that's it, basically. People are not really aware. It's something that they should take seriously because uncertainty is part of life. There are risks involved in everything we do. So from insuring your house to your car to properties you have, it's actually a very wise thing to do. Insurance, to me, is um, to safeguard against loss and risk. That is basically what I know about insurance. Uh, views on insurance. Actually, um, insurance is good, but Nigerians, the, uh, the general view about insurance is, is wrong because when it comes to premium, they expect you to pay premium, but at the end, when the loss occurs, you have to go through stress before you can get your claim. So it's very, very ethic. When you want to sell a policy to a customer, a client, let them know what it entails. Let them know how they can get their funds back in case of any eventuality. Basically, when you let people know what it entails, and they should make it a lot more simpler, easy. I'm sure many people would like to venture into it. Ah. Yes, now this car is insured now. Third party insurance, comprehensive insurance. Yes, health, car, house. Yeah, I'm thinking of taking a life insurance. People should be more enlightened about how important insurance is because it actually is. It actually is very important for people to have insurance. But uh, due to the amount of workforce that we have in Nigeria and uh, the amount people are being paid for their labor. I mean, how much do you have before you start insuring? Very little. You need to have something concrete to live on before you start thinking about insuring the rest. And you kind of notice that uh, most of the people on the streets are saying, um, 
you kind of get that they know what insurance mm. is, but they're like, uh, I think I have very on, on my car, <laughs> I have third oh, party, I'm going, to get. I'm going to get. But really, I think that's a problem and it's um, a, a, an issue with the insurance companies because the average person doesn't really get the entire crux of why he should have insurance. For instance, you, um, there's insurance against death. There's insurance against um, your child's education, for instance. Yeah. So if your child is going to school, there's um, insurance against you dying or being uh, permanently disabled for, and not being able to earn any income again. So the insurance kind of kicks in and makes sure that your children's education are done till the end. Even as a tenant, Imagine your house, as in all the things in your house. Imagine if you had to lose everything to a fire. God forbid. <laughs> I mean, imagine if you had to lose it to a fire. You'd have to start again. Television costs about two times the price it used to be. I tried to buy air conditioning um, last week, and it's about two, two times the price. So imagine buying everything you bought before for again. double the price again. The question you're asking yourself is, uh, why does the average person need insurance? Why, why, why does uh, the person who has a shop in Alaba need insurance? Why does um, um, Ebano need insurance? Why do I need insurance? I mean, uh, so th I think if the insurance companies can go to, I mean, educate. Ex educate, and it's not just having shows and saying, this product, it does this, it does that. You, you really need to touch the people's lives to explain to them in detail why. Why? I mean, why exactly? I could die at any point. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not really, we're all going <laughs> to die someday. So it's important that you prepare for that time. And but you have, and especially if you have dependents, then you need life insurance. I mean, it should be mandatory. So the more you have assets, the more you start thinking of, I need to prepare for anything happening. And I this. think you could tell from the people on the streets that there was a lot of like hesitation. Yeah, they yeah. don't have a lot of confidence that the insurance companies are we'll going pay. to actually pay the mm -hmm. claims. And they feel like there's a lot of processes involved in getting their money back. But can you blame them though? Uh, <laughs> not really. But do you know what I think it is? I think that even if a few years ago, they consolidated that industry, they recapitalized. So the whole point of that was so that we could have stronger um, insurance firms. But I think they still need to do some more consolidation because we still have, the industry is still very fragmented. So yeah. there are a lot of small investment firms that don't have a big enough balance sheet. So those small, because basically the way it works is for an insurance company to be able to pay claims on time, they need to have a lot of premiums. Yeah. And if yeah. they're not, if they don't have enough premiums, um, they can't absorb the risk. So they need, I think that we need to have a, enough companies who are merging so they have bigger balance sheets and are better able to absorb the risks. Uh, on the, because, I mean, the, the, yeah. in, in, the thought is not everybody is going to claim exactly. at the same time. And even with that, like, I think that we shouldn't even, the government shouldn't even just be leaving it to individuals to say, oh, I will get insurance. I think we need to make it mandatory. Mm. They need to set government policies that make it mandatory, just like the pension funds. Yep. Pension companies were not, pensions, people were not contributing to their pensions until it became the law. Yeah. Now the pension companies are one of the biggest investors in stock markets. I'm telling you, they're the biggest indigenous investors exactly. we have anywhere, basically. They have, they have huge balance sheets. And like everywhere around the world, insurance companies have one of the biggest um investments possible they own a big chunk of the stock market they have property they have assets mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so the government needs to set policies that makes it mandatory for people to have car insurance have health insurance have life insurance mm -hmm. so they're deducting it from their salaries um they, On a, and, and, yeah. and if deducting it from your salary is also kind of a savings for you because mm. it's kind of tax exempt. So yeah. you really uh, save a little bit on your taxes that you're paying. So, I mean, it does make a lot of sense. We're just giving you the tips on why, I mean, why? It, it makes too much sense to, to actually have insurance, life insurance, car insurance. Also, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> this is my feeling. I feel like the way insurance companies market themselves is very confusing. Right now, they have insurance products that almost compete with asset management firms and stockbroking firms. So it's like their target savings um, investments. Mm -hmm. So they, they'll say, bring 250000 yeah. and every quarter will pay you this return on your investment. Yeah. But shouldn't they be positioning themselves as you know, risk cushions for 
your property or your assets as opposed to investment products. I, I think they need to focus more on the core of their business and talk to um, people about why they need that safety net yeah. and educate the lower part of the, the bottom of the pyramid. I, people, I, 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 people need to people need to understand. You know, even if you're earning twenty five k as in still, a month, you, know, you can still take um, maybe two thousand or exactly. something out of it. So I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was saying, "Do you know what? I have life insurance because, like, group life insurance, for example, you can pay five thousand naira a month, yeah. and that gives you like a one million naira cover. cover." And he yeah. says, "Do you know what? God forbid, if my friend dies." What they're going to ask me to contribute is actually way more than that five k. Yeah. As in, so it's more um, cost effective in the long run yeah. if you have insurance. True. Breaking it down, um, institutions, insurance institutions, breaking it down to the average person, explaining why they need it and how cheap the premiums can, can be on the long run. In the but long I, 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 I do want to speak for the insurance companies. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to be on your side now. Yeah. It's No, 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 no. <laughs> See, the thing is, they're still very small. So because they, they don't have as many... So they should merge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right now, they're still thinking, okay, let's give other offerings to be able to at least keep in business. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you're not going to buy insurance, you, you might want to save. And they feel, okay... Let's give you a savings product. Although they shouldn't be doing that, like Aressa said, you know, focus on your, your core skill, but it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just don't agree with it. I think it's really <laughs> confusing and, you know, going away from their core business. So get insurance, guys, is really important. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Analyze This. To continue the conversation, the hashtag is Analyze This. The handle is Atandani TV. And my handle is Smart Money Arisa. And my handle is at Tunji Andrews. Till next time, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Faust, aka Faust the Bad Guy. Well, in today's lesson, I will teach you how to subscribe to the Indani TV channel. All you have to do is click on this. So simple, straightforward. <laughs>